Now, what are we talking about when we look at, at, at weed problems? Whenever we look at, at weed problems in no-till, uh, sometimes no-till gets a bad rap whenever we talk about uh, weed problems, and people think that weed problems are worse in no-till. I, I would say that weed control is maybe a little more challenging in no-till. Uh, this producer is, is rotating. Using a crop rotation is going to make weed control much easier regardless of the tillage system you're in. So whether it's no-till or conventional till, weed control is just much easier with a crop rotation. Having said that, if you have a field that has problem weeds, uh, something like feral rye or Italian rye grass, and you're struggling to control those in a conventional till situation, I, I would get that weed problem under control prior to switching to no-till. We're talking about a spray there. Uh, a spray there using a crop rotation, rotating to something like winter canola to try and clean up those fields. If you have a weed problem going into no-till, it's going to be tougher to control and uh, it, it may cause you to revert back to tillage. So I like to get my weed problems under control prior to going into no-till. If you do that and don't introduce any additional weed problems by planting contaminated seed or something along those lines, uh, then, then weed control is going to be similar to what it is in, in conventional till. Just don't introduce any new weed problems and you'll have things under control. And I, I guess that goes to kind of the, the thought behind no till is you don't want to go into this just haphazardly, you want to have a plan, you want to make it and, and, and go forward with it strongly. You, you want to have a plan. I think uh, regardless of the crop you're talking about, the key to being successful in no-till is management. Having a plan, uh, thinking ahead two or three years down the road, understanding what decisions today, how those decisions will affect you a couple of years down the road. So the key is, is management and having a good plan. Well, now you're bringing up variety here, and that's kind of the next question I have is, is are there varieties, or, or what is research showing that are better for this type system? Well, it, it uh, our research has shown over the past three or four years that if you have a variety trial close by, and it's a conventional till variety trial, the varieties that perform well in that conventional till variety trial will perform very well in no-till. There are a few things I like to look for in a no-till variety, though. I like a variety that tillers out very well. Uh, you're, you can have a little bit less tillering in no-till sometimes, so I want one that tillers out very well. And also, especially if you're planting no-till weed after weed, again, looking for that hessian fly resistance. Right. You might pay a little bit of attention to some of the diseases that you uh, maybe haven't paid attention to when looking for a conventional till variety, such as tan spot resistance. Yeah. That's something that can show up in no-till. It's generally not much of a problem in conventional till. But, but by and large, if you've had a variety that's worked well for you conventional till, it's probably going to work very well for you in no-till as well. Good wheat's good wheat. Good wheat is good wheat. Right. I guess one last thing I want to talk about here is, you know, we're thinking about this from the cropping standpoint, but, but what about grazing? Is this still a situation where you can graze? We have a lot of people who, who no-till and graze and have had very good success with it. Uh, obviously, whenever you graze, you're creating compaction out there, but most of the research has shown that that compaction is limited to the top two or three inches of soil. So you're not creating those deep compaction layers like you are with tillage. Uh, one thing with no-till is that in forage production, sometimes that fall forage production on wheat can be less in no-till than it will in conventional till. Our research has shown that it might be seven to 800 pounds per acre less than with a conventional till system. You can offset that by planting a little bit earlier, upping those seeding rates uh, to, to offset that lesser forage production. Even with that, whenever you talk with producers who have been no-tilling for years and they graze, they have found that maybe their forage production uh, declines a little bit, but their gains per acre actually increase. And one reason for that is that we have a, a soil out here that has much more load-bearing strength than a soil that had been tilled uh, prior to planting the wheat crop. Okay. So if we wind up with a, a wet winter, and we have muddy conditions in a lot of fields, we have more load-bearing strength out here, and the cattle aren't packing around mud all winter. So the cattle are more efficient, and maybe there's a little less forage out there, but because the cattle are more efficient, the gains are actually better. Wow, well that's good information. Jeff, we appreciate you helping us out today. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more questions. Uh, Thank you, Austin. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good.